it's me, Crystal, on Quack Talk. Welcome. So today we're going to be talking about something a little meaty, a little juicy, a little, well, some people might find it shameful or embarrassing to discuss something like this. But you know, matter of factly speaking, they say 99% of the people do it and 1% lie about it. So what's the big deal? We're going to talk about masturbation, but specifically masturbation and relation to women and, and what it is with the fantasies and how do we approach and own this aspect of our very personal bodies and, and feelings. So join us now for this juicy topic. Yeah? yeah. Claire, welcome Thank again. You. Our wonderful Dr. Claire Roundtree from the Hawaii Psychology Collective. Again. Great to be here. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Thank and you. this opening of the new year, we're going <clears> to <throat> bless it with something that's really for us women right we are it's such an important topic and one that still in 2017 is so under spoken about yeah right? I mean masturbation is a topic that people shun on anyway and most people assume it's usually a guy issue and people don't even want to go close to the women in masturbation why is that well I agree you know we can start off today's show by just taking a peek at a statistic or two oh, great. so we know that the majority of women thankfully over the age of 18 report having masturbated at least once but what might be a little less known and, and to me rather shocking is that a wonderful study out of the famous Kinsey Institute at Indiana University suggests that in women ages 25 to 29, those really juicy years, right? right, right. Only 7.9% of those women reported masturbating weekly. Whereas about 30% of men reported masturbating several times a week. So while most of us have, quote, tried it, mm -hmm. many of us don't sustain it, we don't practice it, we don't incorporate it into a part of our lives in the same way that men do. Mm. And in not doing that, we are missing out on so many benefits from self-stimulation. There are so many, and we can just, if you'd like, start talking about some of them. Yeah, I, I think it's really important to Before educate Before we talk about that one, though, but I want to balance it with the male side again, because people tend to always distinguish or generalize that men can separate sex with, you know, with feelings, and therefore they can masturbate uh, regularly without any reference to anything. Just mm -hmm. a little, you know, visual or fantasy right or. right but women usually are attached to feelings and emotions and when it comes to masturbation why is it why is it such a, a, a you know a shush thing and you don't come there, back I think there are many reasons for that so I think in general historically we as women have not and in some ways continue to not be conditioned to have open sexual conversations about our bodies, about topics such as self-stimulation, and it's just simply not as normalized as it is for men. Mm. Then we could really go further and say, well, I know in my private practice, psychology practice, I have a lot of women who come in who are in their 30s and have never had an orgasm. Really? Who are far too shamed to even touch themselves who because of familial value systems okay. or spiritual value yeah. systems or cultural value systems, that's off limits. And that has remained off limits and often by the time they come in to see me, they're so displeased with that part of their lives that they want some help to try to turn the corner. And that's a really wonderful thing. But it's interesting that they're searching for help when they realize that there is something, maybe culturally or societal pressures that kept them from pursuing it, but yeah. yet they know their body's telling them that, hey, there's something missing in my life that Absolutely. I need. Absolutely. And, and of course, not all women necessarily who have those feelings of shame and judgment get to the place where they're able to overcome them, unfortunately. Right. But, but fortunately, many women decide, you know what? I, I want to take control of my pleasure. I want to know how to pleasure myself. I want to know how to be a better partner, a better lover. And so it's really nice yeah. when those women show up in my office. I think so too. And also this conversation right now is very healthy. Um, and I have to bring it back to porn because we talked about this several times yeah. on my show. Pornography is a huge kind of a misleading uh, informative or uh, you know, uh, stimulating platform for the wrong reasons and men tend to educate themselves from this and there's nothing about the pleasuring of women and if they do pleasure the women it's also because it's catered to the man's gaze. So there's really nothing in education or uh, media or even porn sites to help women 
take charge, no? I'm pretty excited because I, I knew that I was doing this show, and believe uh -huh. it or not, just yesterday, I came across such a remarkable resource I wanted to oh, good. share okay. with your audience yeah, on please. here that is completely catered to women's self-pleasure, uh -huh. the teaching of, the education of, uh, even tutorials specifically about women's self-pleasure. It's, it's really remarkable. And that resource is called Oh Listen up. My Guys, <laughs> spelled O-M-G-E-Y-E-S. Right. And I, to me, when I uh, found that yesterday, it really broke a barrier for me. Yeah. Because it really was for me, and I, I do quite a bit of work in this area, the first resource that had purely been dedicated to the normalization, celebration okay. of women's self-pleasure. But to go back to the education aspect of it, or information aspect of it, do you think we need to be educated on masturbation? Like, boys, they, they just naturally do it. It's just something innate. They really teaches them. It's not necessarily because they watch porn. Yeah. So women, too, right? You, well, you learn. Some girls, when they're like three, they're like rocking in their chairs, and their mother's like, oh my god, what's she doing? Yeah. Right? That's true. And I think, though, we could compare that with many other things. So what type of exposure we have or don't have, how into self-discovery we are or aren't. Uh, many, many women benefit, truly, from education about their bodies. True. And it may sound surprising, but it really is a fact that the more women know about where to put your fingers, how mm. to use the sex toy, right. how to use other objects. I don't care if it's a shower head, an electric toothbrush. Right. All You're of right. these things can bring a woman to orgasm. And so the more education a woman allows herself to have, the more empowered ultimately she will be in terms of her own sexual health. And that's worth everything. Yeah. So let's talk about this empowerment because people don't really associate masturbation with empowerment uh, per se, but if you think about it, it truly, truly is that simple. I mean, you're, you're owning your, your body. You are entitling yourself to a pleasure that nobody's taken away from you. It's so true. There are so many uh, wonderful benefits of self-stimulation for women. We can begin by just looking at the simple physiology. Mm, okay. When we self-stimulate, mm -hmm. we are increasing blood flow. Right. So these wonderful, happy neurochemicals, especially dopamine and oxytocin, start coursing through, and boy, does it feel good. Even if we don't reach orgasm, uh -huh. the generation of blood flow will help those feel-good chemicals really start to arise. Right. And that is in and of itself an amazing positive right. for self-stimulation. Uh, it's also fun. Yeah. Once you right. start masturbating as a woman and you know how to bring yourself to orgasm, which with the toys today is not a hard thing to do, right. in my opinion, right. uh, it's a very, very empowering feeling, as you said. I'm taking ownership of my body and I'm taking ownership of my pleasure. It helps us sleep better. You know, after we have an orgasm, that's a tension release. So we tend to get a little physically exhausted sometimes. Yeah. So studies have even shown that regular masturbation in women helps women sleep better. Which Especially if you're stressed or just kind of right. caught up with a lot of things in life. That was my next comment. It's also a really wonderful stress reliever. And even if you do have a partner, sometimes a partner can't satisfy you. Many times you cannot. And there's that lack of communication. You just don't want to bother. And then sometimes you resort to masturbation. But I don't want to say resort, actually. It's actually a choice, isn't it? Oh, it's a wonderful choice, yeah. especially if it ends up in an orgasm, right. right? So when you're partnered, masturbation is a wonderful thing because the freer you are with your body, the freer perhaps you'll be in your relationship. Yeah. And ultimately, the more sexual reciprocity in that relationship. So masturbation really does also teach us, hopefully, to feel empowered to speak about what does feel good, what doesn't. Right. And we're in, when we're in a relationship, having that open dialogue is just tantamount to having a really healthy sex life. Yes. And again, going back to you know, criticizing porn for the lack of that is because there is that lack of sensitivity of communication. It's all in your face and using props in just such a vulgar way that you don't realize that just that simple little communication to, with your partner of where, like you said, to move a position or yeah. what you want. Lighter, faster, right. harder. Right. 
put your finger language. there. Put your, it's so true. I think porn fulfills um, other things. I think that it can be a um, useful in many cases or fun you know, sexual aid in a, in a relationship, but porn is not intimacy. And it also distorts fantasy. And where does that take us? Because a lot of times masturbation is uses fantasy to carry us through to whatever pleasure we want to seek. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, and I would say there's nothing wrong with fantasy. Right, of I would course say, not. you know, fantasy is very healthy, whether you're in a relationship, whether you're single, whatever the case may be. Um, using our imagination is a wonderful thing. So first and foremost, though, again, the more we know about ourselves, the more in control what we are likely to feel about do I or do I not want to incorporate pornography? Um, what's the relationship sexually I want to have with my partner? Even if we're not partnered, mm -hmm. one of the great right. benefits of regular masturbation is that it kind of it kind of keeps us in the game, if you will. So if we go uh -huh. long periods of time without sex, there are ramifications of that, the and they're drought. real. And the shrinking of the tunnel, or the mist. The shrinking the, the, of the tissue, the lack of blood flow, yeah. uh, the lack of lubrication. I mean, yeah. these, these are very real outcomes of not having sex. So regular masturbation can keep, help, can keep us healthy, can keep us vaginally healthy, can keep our blood flow going, etc. It also keeps us psychologically, though, in touch with ourselves. So hmm. most of us don't go through the entirety of our lives with a partner. Right. Most of us just don't. Or even if you have a partner, you're not doing you may anything not with them. So it doesn't. You may not be having a lot of sex. No. So knowing again that you're not beholden to. It's, it's just a wonderful thing. So you're thinking throughout the years, for women, it doesn't matter how old you are or what stage in life you are in. That's, masturbation is a healthy thing that you should actively and proactively continue in your life, be a part of your life. Absolutely, because women's sexual health is a, is a very important piece of overall health. And I think that that's the message, if, if no other, that I really want to get out today is that if a woman has a healthy relationship with her sexuality and the expression of it and pleasuring herself, yeah. that goes a long way it toward does. overall confidence, self-esteem. You're right. But it's just so funny because a lot of older women, they think, okay, after menopause, you know, literally dried up, don't care, don't think it's necessary in their life to have anything sexual. And then, again, like you said, it's it's so important in terms of your psychological well-being too that you need to continue that and of course ultimately it is what it is it's a personal choice so but talking about the benefits of maintaining a sexual relationship with yourself throughout the lifespan uh, I think is an important conversation and then obviously individuals will do whatever they feel is best yeah. for them um, but it certainly does have multiple proven benefits. Right. Well, you know, we're going to recap those benefits when we come back from a quick break. So, again, this conversation, this healthy conversation about masturbation for women. Don't go away. We'll be back continuing this talk. So all this hacking has become a major topic. I'm Andrew, the security guy. Join me on Hibachi Talk and learn a little bit more about it. I have my friend Gordo and my puppet buddy, Angus. Check us out on Fridays at 1 o'clock on Think Tech Hawaii. Hi, I'm Marianne Sasaki, and I'm speaking to all engaged citizens. I think everybody should know that there's going to be a big women's march on Washington on January 21st, and there will also be independent marches in each city around the country. And the purpose is for our voices to be heard and to take a stand on reproductive rights and other rights which may be eroded under this presidency. It's not a protest march, however, it's a positive march. So look for your local march and join in. Every hand counts. Looking to energize your Friday afternoon? Tune in to Stay in the Energy Man at 12 noon. Aloha Friday here on Big Tech Hawaii. Back here on Quack Talk, I'm Crystal talking about masturbation for women. But before we get into the whole juicy women's issues with masturbation, I just want to say with Claire here um, that when I had a show in Hong Kong and we talked about masturbation, um, we talked, first of all, I didn't know the proper term for masturbation in Chinese. I only learned the slang, which uh, equivalent to jerking off in Chinese, um, literally means to hit the airplane. 
da fei gei. It's a it's a hit the airplane. Which, if you think about the visual of that, it's like you're slapping, right? It's, yeah. It's like, yeah. So it's a very masculine image. So it's interesting that the vocabulary for the Chinese masturbation is something that's masculine. Geared toward men. Right. Yeah. I mean, there is obviously, there the, the technical terms is it's actually more um, feminine, if you will, but, and it's more internalized. But masturbation for men and women are so different. One is so, it could be internal, it could be multifaceted, as women are. Yeah. And then it's just so simple. It's just jerking off, really. I think mechanically it's simpler as well. Yes. Right? Yes, so very. So we can just, just speak about the mechanics of yes. it. You know, there's a penis, I can see it, yes. and I know what to do with it. <laughs> right. So for us as women, our physiology, our genitalia is a bit more complicated. Yes. There are more moving parts. There's several there's parts. There's several parts. There's inside, outside. That's right. And so we really typically as women, and not that men don't do experimentation, because they do, right. in terms of positioning and what feels better and what doesn't, but as women, we really owe it to ourselves to allow ourselves to do that experimentation. To explore, right. Um, because it isn't only, for instance, stimulating the clitoris. Right. Which, of course, we know can bring us to orgasm. But stimulating other parts of our genitalia can feel good as well. And you just don't know until you start experimenting and allow yes. yourself to explore. to explore your own body. It's your body. Yeah, yeah. It's at, nobody yeah, else's. At, whether it's your partner or yourself exploring, there's so much. It's so creative. So I want to bring in a Zuri from the panel. Zuri, we haven't had your voice for a while on, on our show. So what are your thoughts on um, masturbation? Do it. It's healthy for you. <laughs> Do it. Do it. It's healthy for you. <laughs> what are y'all? You know, Nike should take on a masturbation toy and right. just, say, just do just it. Just do right? it. I love it. I love it. Well, speaking of toys, I yeah. mean, that's a good segue because, you know, a lot of women have never, never even used a sex toy. They've never used a vibrator. They've right. never used a dildo. Yeah. There are so many great products out there. You know, in fact, that's one of the reasons we wanted this conversation because I approached this sex shop yeah. and I wanted them to come in to just kind of show what's out there. But they unfortunately just turned it down maybe because of, again, shyness or whatever. Who they knows? want to bring it out. Who knows? Yeah. Yeah. But I would encourage, I would really encourage women and have encouraged women yeah. to take a trip to their local sex shop. For some women, that may be a little intimidating. Right, right. Just but it can be a super wonderful educational experience. If that's too intimidating, it's okay, because these days it's so easy to just go on the internet and begin educating ourselves about the difference between a vibrator and a dildo, which many women don't know. Right, and then there are these ones that kind of um, satisfy the inside and outside, and they, they look like right. just strange creatures. We've got <laughs> toys that really hit the G-spot. Right. And that's a whole different... That's a whole other thing. That's uh -huh. like a secret thing. I it's mean, a whole different ball of wax, yeah. right? And so that's another part of self-exploration for women is finding their G-spot. Right. Not just their clitoris, but their G-spot. So there really, uh, there really truly is a lot of education um, that is available to us yeah. if we just open ourselves to you know, just really bring that in so that we can empower ourselves as sexual beings and but, as healthy beings. Yes, absolutely. But do you think there's any time too young, too early for young adults to be educated on this? Or, You know, that's a very personal parental call. Mm. I think that for a lot of parents, um, and right now I'm thinking of a very dear friend of mine um, who has a four-year-old, you know, who happens to be a male, you know, she started educating him when he was about two and a half because she saw him beginning to Play seemingly self-stimulate. Right? Yeah. So I think that can be um, just an obvious marker, right? Uh -huh. If you happen to have a young child and you see them to, you know, engage in conversation, a little, a little self-stimulation, just age appropriate. And I think that would you key. encourage it? Personally, uh, I you know I'm very heavy on education. Yeah. So I usually will lean on the side of yes, open education. And again, and it depends on the kid too. If they're curious yeah. about life and they are exploring, you might want to encourage yeah. that conversation yeah. earlier. And the parent will know certainly better right. than I. But in general, I do believe information is power. Yeah. But culture is a real stigma for a lot of people, and you know, especially like Chinese culture. I have a friend in Taiwan, and her daughter 
a very precocious 10 year old would um, actually tell her mother that she feels she wants to pleasure herself and the, the Taiwanese mother is like oh my god I can't believe what I'm am I gonna do yes. yeah yeah so yeah we some have... people are more sexual than others too some people right? are more, and or for more a host of reasons. Right, okay. And for okay. a host of reasons. So I think that, for instance, when somebody comes in, when a woman comes in to see me for sexual related issues, as a clinician, I do my very best to make sure I'm taking into consideration the cultural lens, the value okay. system, the spiritual lens, if it's right. applicable. Uh, past traumatic experiences that that can play a very big ah, factor. So, for example, abuse from a previous Sh sure or abuse, or early exposure to pornography. I mean, it could be a myriad okay, of things. Okay. So, as a clinician, you know, I think that's really our expertise yes. is in looking at each person as an individual and and working with them where they are. But cultural shame is real. Uh, religious shame is real. Um, so outside of the cultural and religious aspects of it, when is masturbation unhealthy? Masturbation becomes unhealthy when it's interfering with an individual's ability to carry out normal daily functions. Okay. And I treat this as well. So now we're really talking about truly a form of sex addiction and okay. it's a very serious thing. So I see this a lot in conjunction with the use of internet porn. Right, going back to that. Um, yeah. I, a lot of it, not always, but mostly. And I think that any time you're engaging in a behavior where you're doing so much of it that it begins feeling like an obsession. Mm -hmm. And really what that means is you're thinking about it all the time. Then you have compulsive action. I have to do it, I have to do it, I have to do it. And you're shirking other important aspects of your life. You know, then we have a real clinical issue on our but hands. But going back to the male aspect, again, don't, you know, they all think about it all the time. So at, when is it unhealthy for them to not, to, to, to overdo it? Oh, I've had many men in my practice over the years treating them for sex addiction So it's okay to, to think about it, but it's just your, you know, consequential. Are they not going to work because of it? Or going to are the bathroom they, every two minutes? Yeah, to... absolutely. Yeah. Then, then we really can look at it in the... Um, way that we would look at another addiction. But physically, I'm sure there's that harm too of any overstimulation of anything. That, That's just... a really good point. And, and there's so, there's so um, much less research in the area of women's sexuality than men's. Right. No shocker there. Gee, yeah. um, but what we do know is that actually erectile dysfunction can be caused in men who are excessively masturbating. Right. Right? Right. But can women over masturbate? You know, that's a great question. Because we can I'm, multi orgasmic, right? Oh, but, over but, and over and but, over. I, I really want to, from a scientific point of view, refrain from answering that because I just haven't seen any good research huh. about that. So I what I can say to you is in twenty years of practice, I have yet to have a woman in my office whose life is being detrimentally affected by over-masturbation. That's really all I can say Okay. as a practitioner. So it's more the psychological aspect of it. Yeah, and it's really men that I've treated oh. for uh, addiction right. to masturbation, not right. women. Yeah. Zuri, did you say you had a question? I do have yeah, a question. Yeah, please, please. You know, we're talking about the fact that women, you know, haven't come forward and said that they've had a problem with masturbation. But what about all the women who are having a problem with using sex toys and becoming desensitized? You know, how would we navigate that problem? Okay, so being desensitized from sex toys that women use specifically, how does that kind of come into play? Yeah, there's more conversation around the table now about that. And I have seen in a lot of instances men feel at times, some men, I should say, feel somewhat intimidated or insecure being with a woman who enjoys and uses sex toys. Huh. This right. really isn't an uncommon right. thing for me right. to see. So as far as women's ability to stimulate becoming nil because of the use of sex toys, right. um, I, honestly, I don't see a lot of that. Ideally, if you have a partner, mm. it would be wonderful to bring in the sex toys into the sexual relationship so that you can just normalize it. And hopefully, if you have a partner 
you're not solely relying on the use of sex toys because you're in relation with another human yes. who also has needs. Which is kind of a more important aspect <laughs> you know, of life, you think. Right. So I think that, you know, with everything, we sort of, as human beings, yes. are called upon to regulate ourselves. I certainly don't want to just ignore my partner's wants, needs, desires. But it's not as interesting as that new technology out there that can yeah. do all these multifunctions. Yeah, choices. For the press of a button and choices, a battery. Right? Right. I mean, their choices. But, you know, Zuri had a good point. I mean, because sex toys, there is that whole variety, like you said. There's such a range of exciting choices. Yeah. But at the same time, what does that do to your, um, your desires? Does that put it up a notch and does that do you rely more on the luxury of that of those props and then you can't take it down the level to the whole natural way of, of pleasuring I, I think that is going to really have to be looked at though in context of an individual's uh, the health of their relationship oh. so if I'm single I'm going to be using my toys right. all I want have a whole closet when I want and, uh -huh. and not think a thing about it when I am in a partnership I'm still going to use my sex toys <laughs> But I think for me, part of that healthy relationship right. means that I am aware enough to want my partner also to have a good sexual experience. I want to have a good sexual experience. So I, I, for me, nothing really takes the place of a live human being. Yeah, no, of course not. For some people, it can. And then well, I for think guys can. They can do that inflatable doll thing, right? They can do many things. They can do anything. They can do many things. Bag over they their head. They can do many things, but it still <laughs> does not equate to intimacy. Right. Right, and we are women, and we need intimacy. And so do men. Men do too, and so it goes back down to that conversation that men and women, and when men, men and men, and women and women should have over the intimacies and what you need and what you would like with That's your partner. Right. right. That's right. So give us like the, what's the takeaway for today? The takeaway for today, I'd say, is women don't be afraid to educate yourselves about self pleasure. It will be an empowering tool, not uh, something that will minimize you. We have to reduce the shame and stigma around self-pleasure. And if you're in a relationship, it will only really, truly be an additive to that relationship. Pleasurable empowerment. There we got that from Dr. Claire Roundtree. And you know what? Take it in yourself. You know your body better than anyone else. So don't listen to all that crazy stuff out there. Thank you so much, Dr. My Roundtree. Pleasure. And no pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> Have a great day. <laughs>